and I'm here on behalf of Sewing for Lives and I'm going to be demonstrating the basic medical mask cover. We are making medical mask covers. These mask covers are intended to act as a barrier for medical grade masks and are machine washable. Please keep your sewing area clean and free from pets, food, and debris. Alright, this is the wraparound method. You can use bias tape or fabric ties and this one's with a t-shirt tie. Here's our mask cover with the t-shirt ties. You can also use fabric ties that are sewn into the corners. These are t-shirt yarn ear loops, both of them. We are not using elastic as that is harder on the medical personnel's ears from wearing them all day or other frontline workers. I wanted to point out I have two different t-shirts here. This one is not as stretchy as this one. This one's quite a bit more stretchy. This is a blended cotton and blended cottons are cotton shirts that have spandex or polyester and they're a little bit nicer for the ear loops. If you make your own t-shirt ties you'll have fabric that looks like this. This is my t-shirt and if you want to know how to get it to curl like that all you do is pull it tight and then you tie a knot in the end. This is the method we have been using where we stitch around the edges leaving an opening and our ties are in the corners and we turn it right side out. I am actually going to be showing you a more efficient method called chain sewing. Alright, so chain sewing is where you do one step at a time on every single mask. It is far more efficient if you are sewing a lot of one item, which we are trying to do. If you're wondering how people are sewing them so fast, a lot of them are already doing this method. The best thing about chain sewing is it saves on time and thread. So we have our supplies and we want to start with our seven by nine inch squares. We have a front and a back and you want your front and back to be different fabrics so that medical workers, frontline workers can quickly see and know where their front is. Then we have different options for our ties here and we're going to be sewing those in. All right, first thing you want to do is get your right sides front and back, make your right sides go together and with chain sewing what you want to do is get everything ready to go. So I already have these front and backs ready to go and I layer them like that. I'm going to grab my top one. We will be doing quarter inch seams and whenever you start and stop you're going to back stitch. So I'll go ahead and start that. A quarter inch seam is on the edge of your presser foot generally. And I'm just going to sew along the whole top of this first mask. Back stitch when you start and stop, and this is how you chain sew. I will get my next set of masks. I'm going to just leave this right in, and then I just continue sewing. Back stitch when I start and stop. Grab my next mask. Okay, so we are going to be doing three right now for this video. The awesome thing about chain stitching is now they are all ready to go. I just have to clip that thread. Your first one, you'll have your long threads. And now we're going to just flip these right over. And I leave my other one in. Your machine will not get jammed as easily if you always have something in the back of your foot. And now I'm going to sew the bottom half. Quarter inch seams, back stitch when you start and stop. So I have all three of these ones, and if I had 20, I would have a line of 20 here, clip them apart, and now at this point, we are going to do something a little bit different with each one to show you different ways you can do this quickly. Our first one's going to be with um, putting our ear loops or ties, you can use either one, directly. So I'm going to take my little ear loops here, and I am going to place them right inside the top corner, just like that. We're going to sew that down. And remember, always quarter inch seam, back stitch when you start and stop. And I don't want to get that other end lost, so i got to get in there and find it. If you're doing ties, then you would just leave it in there, and you would get your next tie and put that in. This one's a air loop, so I just grab the other end, stick it in the bottom, match my fabric together, 
as best as I can. And so, and I'm holding that tie right in place. I just sewed over it. And if I was doing um, chain sewing, I would do that with all my masks. So then all that side would be done. So then I would do the next side with all my masks. And this, you're probably wondering, how do we going to turn this right side out? Well, here's my little loop. Sometimes those get lost and out of the way. So this one is a way of having our opening on the side rather than in the top. So you don't have to worry about sewing the top closed. So we're going to go ahead and stick that in. We're going to stitch. Quarter inch seam, back stitch when you start and stop. And we're going to sew just a little bit, a couple inches, and then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to grab the rest of my little ear loop, or if you were doing ties, get your next tie. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bottom here and hold on to that. And then I'm going to skip a couple of inches right here. I'm not going to sew. We're going to leave an opening right there. So now I have an opening ready to turn it right side out. All right, so we have our opening here on the side. We're going to turn this right side out. So similar to what we've been doing, except for in the side where the ear loops or t-shirt ties are, or bias tape ties or fabric ties, whatever is your preference. One side is all sewn close, and then this side we're going to be folding in and doing the pleats. And I'm going to demo that in a little bit. For now, I'm going to set that one aside. And now we've got this one. We're going to turn it right side out. All ready to go. And we are just going to do what we call finger pressing. I'm going to finger press this in like this. Basically, you're folding it in a quarter of an inch. And the more you do it, the faster you get. And I'm not super fast at this. But you hold that down. And I have these awesome little hair clips that you could just use to help you hold that down. And then you can go ahead and get ready to sew this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the ties t-shirt ties, or you could do fabric ties on this one. We didn't put them in yet, so we've got to put them in before we sew. So I'm just going to stick that right up in the corner, stick it in at least a quarter of an inch so it's good and secure. We're going to top stitch, and you can do this a couple of ways. You can either move your needle all the way over to the edge. I like to do that because right here are your feed dogs. This is what feeds your fabric through, and sometimes when you're really thick, if I move this right next to the edge in the middle, this feed dog isn't being used, and so it gets harder to push. But you can do it that way. I do it this way, and I move my needle for top stitching. So then I'm going to go ahead and start top stitching. We'll back stitch and we start and stop. Now we've got to make our pleats. So we are going to do that as we sew this. After you've gotten that tie sewn in, you're going to take a corn cob holder. You could use a seam ripper. You could even use just your hands. No and fold that under just like that and I'm I know my edge isn't perfect but I want to just get this demo for you and then once I get started to sew that make your needle go down you may have a button that pushes it or use your crank on the side and we're going to now get our next pleat and you want these pleats to be about half of an inch away from each other and about half of an inch deep and keep sewing that Okay, so now we got to get our next one going. We'll sew that one. And if you've gone a little far and you want to push this pleat in more, then lift up your pressure foot, get that in, and pull it across. And go ahead and sew. Okay, now this, I'm glad I have this, it's in the way. It is reminding me that I need to add my other tie. And if I was doing t-shirt loops, then I would grab the other end of my loop Stick it in there, open this up, make sure you're in at least a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch. And I even use these to kind of push that down in place. Hold that good, get my pleat in, and keep sewing. 
And if it's thick, just give it a nice push and then back stitch. All right, so then you would continue doing that with each mask and then you would flip it around and do it on the other side. All right, so this is our third one that I'm gonna show. And I'm gonna turn it right side out. And we're going to press it nice and flat. I know that looks a little funny how I'm pressing it, but this is how I press it nice and flat to get that edge. Pull it, and it helps separate those so they'll actually open up. So it's like bubbled like that. And I press that flat. And voila, we have a nicely pressed flat mask. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks. Since we are already here pressing, then this is a great option for the pleats. This is my top. I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to press it right in half, get a nice crease. I'm going to then fold this up to that middle crease and fold this up to that middle crease. And I'm going to press that edge to create another crease on that side and this edge to create a crease on this side. Now what I'm doing is creating my lines for my pleats. I pinch each of those, fold them about half of an inch, and it's about basically how far from the bottom and then you fold that up. The pleats always face down, so this is our top, this is our bottom. And then this is my favorite thing, no pins are necessary. Use a bobby pin or other type of hair clip if you have it that will work. I've seen some other things people have that will hold them down. And slide that on and it is ready to go. All right, so this was the one that we did the corn cob holder. This is the other option is to press it so they don't have to hold it so much. So now I've pressed that in and then we can finish it up doing the same thing on the opposite side. We'll look at that in a minute. This one is the one that we left that opening. We turned it right side out and I've pressed that down. You could finger press that or do this. And then same thing, you can choose whether to fold it or to do the corn cob holder method. Now I did want to just show on this machine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and with this mask, stick in the ties. Now this time we are upside down on this side, opposite of the other side. And I'm gonna Go ahead and start edge stitching or top stitching and back stitch. And then for this side, we want to do the opposite. And so we'll fold our edge. And you know what? You can use a corn cob holder. You can also just do it with your fingers. Some people do better with that. I think I kind of do better with that. And then push it through. And then when you're ready to do your next fold, it's about half of an inch, half of an inch here and here, right up to the bottom of that presser foot, stick it under the edge, and stitch, and then don't forget to put your tie in this end, and put that in place, and you can even clip that or pin it so it's ready, and then we're going to do our final pinch, I went a little far so I'm going to lift up that presser foot, Get that pinch ready to go and stitch that. Move this and back stitch. And the more you do this, the more you really get the hang of it. So there we have our first little mask. Now you do need to top stitch again around, we go over, around, and the whole mask. You must top stitch both sides twice each and that is because there's so much pressure and tension on these that they pull and these threads will break through so it does need to be top stitched a second time on both sides okay this is the mask that i had left an opening in the side and it is now pressed in you can't tell very well but that's our little opening i've pressed it ready to go and i'll top stitch around down this and around i'm not going to do that right now i'm going to then show the other method and this one we didn't do anything with our edges and we're going to wrap around it. What that means, and you could use bias tape uh, or fabric ties, or you can use a t-shirt tie. What you want to do is find the center, set it against this top corner because actually you want the top of your ties to be a little bit longer than the bottom. Do you see how it's longer on the top than the bottom? This is the top of my mask. And I'm going to put that on the back side of my mask where, and it's going to be rolling away from the mask. So your t-shirt tie is rolling away from the mask, 
we start right here, quarter inch seam. And I still have my needle, we want it in the center. Back stitch when you start and stop. Stitch down that. Back stitch. And then I love this next thing. You're going to wrap around it and then stitch it down again. And it is very quick. And this is also why I love chain stitching is you don't have your thread coming up or get in the way. It's just being pulled. So if I was chain stitching these, I would have a whole line of them and do one at a time each step. And we're going to go ahead and just top stitch this. Back stitching when I start and stop. And then this side is done and ready to go. And it has been sewn twice because you sewed it when you put the back on and then you sewed it when you've wrapped it around. So this will be complete when I sew the other side on. So now I'm just stitching around my mask. And I'm going to pivot and go across the bottom. Okay, so I am chain stitching where I have this mask behind, this mask in front. And then I would continue with however many masks I was making. And then when I was done with all of them on this side, I would remove them all. And you could clip the threads then or leave them all on and then stitch along the other side. All right, this is the bias tape or fabric um, wrap. And what you do is find the center, stick it at the top corner of your mask, and put it up against the back of your mask. Stitch it on at a quarter inch. Back stitch. And then the difference between this and the t-shirt wrap, the t-shirt yarn wrap, is this one you've got to sew not just right here, but along this whole strip. So we'll start at the top and fold that in. You can't have any raw edges, so we're going to fold it in. And it needs to fold towards the mask, so we're going to fold it this way. And we're going to be stitching on this little edge. All right, so here's the fabric tie. I'm folding it over, stitching along. I'm getting close to wrapping around that edge, and it gets such a nice, clean finish. Getting all the threads out of the way. And just top stitch right on top of that. Folding as you go. Okay, so here's the mask that we did. I like the t-shirt ties over the bias strips because you only have to sew here, so less thread. But the bias strips or fabric ties are really sturdy and they do hold it in really well. Alright, then on these two masks, I did not top stitch the top and bottom here. That is nice to do. I did do it here. It is not necessary, but it does help hold it up better during washing. It is necessary to stitch twice on the edges, so just keep that in mind to reinforce those pleats. This completes my demonstration for the basic medical mask covers. On behalf of Sewing for Lives, we want to thank you for all your time, talents, dedication, and hard work to getting this done. You're blessing so many lives. Thank you so much.